Another big error Michael made here, in my opinion, is that he re-raised to 7,000. It went 2,500 call. You have to understand, when it gets back to Tom Dwan, he has to put in $4,500 to try to win, what, 18,000? Hello everyone, I am Jonathan Little. I'm here today with episode 335 of Weekly Poker Hand. And over the next few months, we are going to be reviewing hands from High Stakes Poker. This is one of my favorite poker shows on TV. They play gigantic games with a great cast of characters. And I'm excited to see this show returning to Poker Go. If you are not already subscribed to Poker Go, you are missing out. I highly recommend going there, subscribing, and devouring all of the episodes of High Stakes Poker. Also, they have new episodes of Poker After Dark featuring me. I have strategy segments in most of the videos where I go through and analyze an interesting hand. And also, I'm going to be playing in a few episodes, so make sure you check that out at Poker Go. All right, let's get right to the action. We have Tom Dwan. You all may know him. Very loose, very aggressive, splashy, battling player. He has 10-6 suited under the gun, playing 400-800, no limit hold'em, with an 800 ante, so big game with a 240 big blind stack, 200,000 bucks or so in front of him. So very, very deep stack game. He has 10 six of spades. Most mere mortals fold this hand, but eh, you know, if you want to splash around with these suited connected hands, I think it's okay. They are playing seven handed. Like I'd much rather raise a hand like 10 six suited than a six offsuit. But uh, Jonathan Little, being the mere mortal he is, does not raise 10-6 suited either. Whatever. Tom Dwan raises 10-6 suited. Nick Petrangelo right behind him. You all may not know him, but he is a world-class tournament player. He's been playing the super high roller tournaments recently and doing well. I think he has about $17 million in live tournament caches. Very, very strong online player. I actually chopped a tournament with him a long time ago at the PCA. Say a long time ago. When was that? Must have been four or five years ago. That was fun. Anyway... Here he is with Ace Jack of Clubs in the low jack seat. I definitely like calling um, against the early position raisers, even if they are Tom Dwan. They're going to have reasonable ranges, so you can't get too out of line. And Ace Jack suited flops great. So this is a spot where I definitely think he should call. Nick typically plays good, strong GTO poker, so I don't expect him to make any sort of overly creative plays. I'm not trying to like sound negative towards him. I think that's a good thing. I think when you make a lot of them overly creative plays, quite often they backfire on you. Um, but I, I like the way Nick plays a lot. Anyway, he calls. Now, Michael Schwimmer, who I did not know before this show, he used to be a professional baseball player. Now he's mixing it up in the high stakes streets, battling at the Cadillac of poker, no limit Texas variety. And he has the ace two offsuit. This seems like an easy fold to me, but he decides to three bet. Typically, when you are picking hands to three bet, when you are deep stacked, usually you want to three bet your best hands. And then also some hands that flop reasonably well when your re-raise, your 3-bet, does get called. So what hands are those? Those are usually going to be the marginal, suited, connected, junky hands that are not quite good enough to call. Maybe something like, I don't know, 8-6 suited some portion of the time. That's a hand that you don't quite want to call. If you want to get a little bit splashy in 3-bet hand, I think that's perfectly reasonable. Typically, whenever you 3-bet a hand like 8-6 suited, when your opponent calls... If you make a straight or a flush or two pair, you're still going to be very, very happy, right? And they're often going to be, assuming your range contains a lot of high cards, so you get to steal the pot on a lot of high card boards, and on low card boards, you actually have a premium hand a lot of the time, right? You don't really want to be three betting the ace X offsuit when you're deep stacked, though, because whenever you do get called before the flop, you're just going to flop nothing the vast majority of the time. And when you do flop something, it's top pair bad kicker or bottom pair top kicker. It's not a particularly great hand. So this is a type of hand you'd much prefer to re-raise when you are shallow stacked. Because when you're shallow stacked, say you're playing 35 big blinds deep, if someone raises and you re-raise to six or seven big blinds, at that point, they're going to be in all inner fold mode a decent chunk of the time, which means your post-flop playability doesn't really matter. But here we're playing very deep stacked. So you are going to get called a decent amount of the time. Another big error Michael made here, in my opinion, is that he re-raised to 7,000. It went 2,500 call. You have to understand, when it gets back to Tom Dwan, he has to put in $4,500 to try to win, what, 18,000? He's going to call or re-raise with literally every single hand in his opening, open raising range from under the gun seven-handed. Because I don't think Tom Dwan is raising stuff like King-8 offsuit that may actually fold to a small three bet. He's raising with the best hand, and then if he is getting loose, it's going to be with suited, connected type stuff that flops well enough. And when you give him great odds, 
he's never going to fold. So by three betting small, you're basically forcing your opponents to continue. But you definitely do not want your opponents to continue, especially when you have the ace two offsuit. When you are going to three bet in this scenario, you typically want to use roughly a pot sized re raise. And a pot size uh, re raise, the way you calculate that is you take three times the last bet plus any additional money in the pot. So three times the last bet is 2,500 plus 2,500 plus 800 plus 400 plus 800. So that comes out to 7,500 plus 25 plus 25. That is about $12,500, give or take a little bit. So if you are going to re-raise in this spot, you want to make it about 12500 to give yourself some pre-flop fold equity. Whenever you re-raise small like this, you're literally always getting called. And that's not good if you have some bluffs in your range, right? Anyway, everybody folds back around to Tom Dwan, who, like I said, he's either going to call or re-raise. Even though 10-6 suited is not a good hand, pot odds exist. He has to continue. He does. Um, back to Nick Petrangelo, same spot. I don't think... Well, I, I did not know Michael before... Um, this episode of high stakes poker but maybe these players did it seems like he was getting in there and battling but even then if you know he's getting in there and battling you don't really want to four bet here because with, with the uh, ace with ace jack of clubs because tom duan could easily have a hand like ace queen maybe ace king being a little bit cautious probably not um also michael could just have a very strong hand as well because remember he three bet the under the gun and low razor and low jack caller so he should have a strong range so i, I definitely think nick petrangelo should just call here he has no other option on the flop, it comes Jack of Diamonds, Ten of Diamonds, Six of Clubs, giving Tom Dwan bottom two pair, Nick Petrangelo top pair top kicker and a backdoor flush draw, and Michael Schwimmer zip and pip. Absolute nothing. This is a spot where the board actually connects pretty well with everybody's range. Um, that said, I do think the out of position players, Tom and Nick, are going to check to the initial raiser most of the time. And with Ace-2 offsuit, you just got to give up. Whenever you're playing multi, you have to be very, very cautious, especially on boards that should connect well with your opponent's ranges. And when there's a jack and the 10 on the board in a three bet pot, you can pretty much count on one of your two opponents having something. And, you know, maybe both of them have something. So this is a spot where Michael just has to check. I actually have a cash game cheat sheet that will give you all sorts of tips to crush cash games that you should probably check out. Check that out at pokercoaching.com slash cash tips. Okay, go there, get that, reference it, and make good use of it so that you do not make blunders like betting too wide in multi-way pots. So anyway, I think this is an easy check for Michael, and he does check. Good. Turn is the eight of hearts. So it's jack, 10, six, eight, two diamonds. Tom Dwan has middle and bottom pair, and he's in a pretty neat spot because he's out of position with a Pretty strong hand, but it's definitely not the nuts, right? So what should he do? Take a second. Think about it. And you know what I want you to do? I want you to pause this video. If you're listening to this in the audio format, pause it. Think about what you would do in the spot and write it in the comment section below on YouTube. If you're not watching this at youtube.com slash poker coaching, you are missing out because there's a video here. So go in the comment section below and say what you would do. Would you check with the middle and bottom pair? Would you bet small, like 8,000? Would you bet medium, like 16,000? Or would you bet giant, like 2x pot, like 45,000? Going through this exercise will go a long way to ensuring that you are thinking about the game and actively learning. That's what I teach at PokerCoaching.com. If you have not checked out my training site, PokerCoaching.com, it's free. Check out PokerCoaching.com slash free to get your trial membership. All right, this is a spot where, in my mind, Tom Dwan has only one option. You wrote yours in the comment section below, right? Make sure you do it. Commit. That's how you get good. This is a spot where I think Tom Dwan should bet using a medium to big bet size. I don't think he wants to go gigantic like 2x pot because when he goes gigantic, then he's mostly going to be getting called by very, very strong hands from his opponents. But... Whenever you are betting infrequently on a coordinated board into multiple people, you're usually betting with a somewhat polarized range, meaning you either have a really good hand or a draw of some sort. A draw here may be a hand like king-queen, maybe king-nine suited, maybe something um, 
like diamonds, like maybe ace x of diamonds, maybe king x of diamonds, depending on how wide Tom's range is. And then you're gonna be betting with straight sets, two pairs, right? So whenever you use that strategy, you either have a really, really premium hand or you have a draw and it puts your opponents in a pretty nasty guessing game. And I think this two pair is definitely good enough to bet. It's pretty easy for Nick Petrangelo to have ace jack, king jack, queen jack, jack nine, queen 10, 10 nine, hands like that that really can't fold to a decently big bet. And when Michael lets it go check, check, check on the flop, he almost certainly doesn't have a premium hand, so you're not worried about him having you beat. Also, I would expect Michael to have a whole lot of ace, king, and ace, queen here, and you don't really want to check and let those hands see a free river. So I like a bet in Tom Dewan's shoes. I'd go something like 16,000. Tom does go uh, 17,000. I like the play. I really think that is the only option. The problem with going small, by the way, is that while you will get called by more hands that you beat, you're not really giving those hands that bad of pot odds, and they're not really making that big of an error by calling. Whenever you bet bigger here, some of the weaker hands, if they do decide to call, are uh, making an error, and if your opponents do have a draw, you want to charge them the most you reasonably can. So I like Tom's play a lot. Around to Nick Petrangelo, top pair, top kicker. It's normally a pretty good hand, but multi-way, when your opponent is betting in this scenario into you and the other opponent, it's a strong marginal made hand. If you raise in this scenario and get re-raised, it's just miserably bad. If you raise and get called, it's certainly not great because either your opponent has a really strong made hand as well or they have a draw that has plenty of equity. So this is a spot where I think the only good play for Nick is to just call. You know, there's actually merit to perhaps folding a hand like this. Not in this exact scenario, but if we were more multi-way, like hypothetically, let's say Tom Duan raised under the gun, Nick called, three more people called, Michael three bet small, everybody called, Flop comes, they check it through, turns the eight. If Tom then bets into like four or five opponents, this ace jack actually could just be a fold. It, this, is, this hand is much weaker than it actually appears at this point because of the way this jack 10, six, eight board is gonna line up with everybody's ranges. So this is a, a good play by Nick just calling, which is what he does. Michael was zip and pip. He was over there hanging out, eating a sandwich, he folds. And now we see the River 2, which is one of the best cards for Tom Dwan, one of the worst cards for Nick Petrangelo, because on a 10, 6, 5, 4, 3, or 2, Tom Dwan's hand is quite premium. Notice, though, if the River was an ace, king, queen, jack, 9, 8, 7, right? All of those cards are quite bad for Tom Dwan because then there'll be a 4 straight on the board or an over card that Nick could very easily have. And that's going to make it to where if Tom bets on those rivers, when he does get called, he's often not going to be loving it. But here, it's pretty easy for Tom Dewan to bet. Given Tom is known to be a very loose and aggressive player, I think Nick is kind of forced to call with hands like a jack, maybe even a 10 if he has it. Like say he does have 10-9 or ace-10. If he did decide to call the turn bet with those, I think that you just got to pay off against Tom Dewan in the spot. Um, given there are a lot of draws in Tom Dewan's range that he could have, I think he wants to go for a big bet size again. Pot's 57,000. I would go pretty big, like 45K, 50K. I don't think you want to go gigantic like two times pot or 3X pot all in because then even hands like Ace Jack are going to start folding out and that's exactly what you're trying to get called by, right? So this is a spot where I like a substantial but non-humongous bet. Typically your humongous bets are going to be reserved for your effective nut hands. The hands are just like almost always good. It's going to be like queen nine, nine, seven, right? For the straights. And then some sporadic bluffs, usually blocking your opponent's calling range. Um, and then your other bet size is going to be hands like, well, this, like strong two pairs, sets, etc. And usually you want to go pretty big in the spot. Tom does go uh, 46,000. So I'm playing exactly like Tom Dwan in the spot. I don't know if that's good for me or bad for him. <laughs> And um, over to Nick, like I said, this is just a, a rough spot where I think he's forced to pay. The only time you can actually fold in this scenario when a lot of draws miss is when you know your opponent's especially weak and passive and they don't have all that many bluffs in their range. But that's not Tom Dwan. If you are playing small stakes or medium stakes cash games and you know your opponent's a weak, tight knit, when they make a big turn bet and a big river bet, more often than not, they're just going to show up with the nuts, Right. So if they're going to show up with the nuts more often than not, then you, in turn, should be overfolding. However, even though it seems like Tom Dewan has chilled out a little bit from the uh, previous episodes of High Stakes Poker from back in the day, 
he's still in there battling. I mean, look, he's raising the 10-6 suited under the gun, right? What do you want from the guy? <laughs> so this is a spot where Nick just has to find a call. That's what he does. And a $149,000 pot gets shipped over to Tom Dwan right at the start of the show. Again, if you are not watching Poker After Dark, I highly recommend it. If you love poker, check that out at Poker Go. And if you want to be notified when I'm uploading more hands like this, make sure you click the notification bell below the video. Also click like, click subscribe. I would appreciate it. That helps the YouTube supercomputer know that you like my content. If you don't like it, well, go somewhere else. Enjoy your life. Life's too short to be watching content you don't enjoy. Have a great day. Thank you for being here. Good luck in your games. And I'll talk to you next time. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want more strategy lessons, preflop charts, and interactive quizzes, make sure you get your free membership to PokerCoaching.com right now at PokerCoaching.com free. I'll talk to you next time.